So, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. As a, we live in a world with increasing complexity of uh, structures and forms, and uh, perhaps you know, since the antiquity, philosophers and uh, scientists asked, uh, what are the reasons of these emerging structures, and are there common uh, laws uh, behind the uh, development from the big uh, bang of uh, our universe to the big data of our uh, civilization. So, um, obviously, there are similar structures in a different field. For example, in uh, cosmology, um, pre-Socratic philosophers assumed that uh, the world has emerged from emptiness. And uh, modern cosmologists assumed that uh, in the beginning there is a quantum vacuum as quantum physical ground state, but uh, this quantum vacuum is not completely empty, but it is characterized by quantum fluctuations according to Heisenberg's uncertainty uh, principles, and these local activities in the quantum vacuum are the origin for emerging uh, bubbles driven and uh, blown up by inflationary phases or imploding just uh, after uh, their birth. And uh, uh, early pictures of uh, the universe just after the Big Bang show a nearly completely homogeneous and symmetric pattern with uh, local perturbations and local symmetry breaking. And these local perturbations and symmetry breaking are the emergence, the origin for the later on emerging galactic uh, structures. Or, for example, in uh, biological evolution, similar structures in uh, cellular tissues or in the development of our civilization, the uh, similar structures in urban, urban settlements, for example, or uh, geographic uh, structures, or even data patterns in uh, the internet, in uh, the information and uh, communication systems. One of the first scientists who thought about the reasons of uh, uh, pattern formation was Alan Turing. And I must say, since my PhD, I was fascinated by his ingenious ideas on uh, computability, on computing computers and uh, logic. But uh, in his last few articles, just before his death, he uh, uh, considered the reasons of pattern formation. And a very simple uh, situation here, the um, two cells uh, in a mathematical sense only with two uh, molecules and he assumes that in the beginning these cells are separated and uh, stable and stability means in a mathematical sense they are dead but then they are brought together by diffusion exchange and uh, in this way described uh, in a linear way and then the whole system is destabilized. And later on, a famous uh, uh, Berkeley mathematician, Stephen Smale, proved that uh, uh, in the case of uh, nonlinear exchange, then uh, uh, the whole system has even oscillating uh, solutions, and that means pattern uh, formation. And uh, what we did, my uh, Berkeley colleague Leon Schuer and I later on, was to consider the uh, general case. That means arbitrarily many uh, cells here in the spatial grid with uh, grid points at each grid point, identical cells, and each cellular state uh, depends on the uh, neighboring uh, cells. And what we find, I think, is real crucial for pattern formation. Uh, the local activity principle. And local active cells amplify small inputs of neighboring cells, initiating the emergence of patterns from homogeneous states. And this principle can be formalized in a rigorous way, completely independent of any physical, chemical, or biological interpretation, only by an integral summing up the uh, inputs of the neighboring cells and generating a strong output for pattern, uh, pattern formation. And all these uh, uh, activities uh, indicate 
um, central law, the third law of thermodynamics. You know, perhaps, the first law of thermodynamics only guarantees the conservation of energy in a closed system. And the second law, according to Boltzmann, only uh, describes the decay of order in a closed system. But the local activity principle explains the emergence of structures in an open system with dissipative interaction with its uh, environment. And uh, for the nerds among you, this is a mathematical machinery, some uh, equations describing the change of the cellular uh, states with this uh, X, uh, the st uh, cellular state variable, alpha, beta, gamma, the uh, spatial uh, grid points and the function describing the uh, change of uh, the uh, cellular states and the local coupling laws with the diffusion coefficient and the Laplace operator. This is only the discreet uh, situation in uh, uh, the grid system and uh, if we replace the uh, discrete uh, quantities by their limiting continuous versions then we get the standard nonlinear reaction diffusion partial differential equations. And uh, the solutions of these equations correspond to pattern formation. Pattern illustrated here by a plane with grid points, tiny cells, each cell uh, uh, indicate uh, different our states by different uh, colors and this is obviously a transition from uh, simplicity to complexity. Complexity means homogeneity, homogeneous distribution, complexity in a rigorous sense, an inhomogeneous uh, pattern here depending on different values of uh, the diffusion uh, parameters. And uh, obviously uh, this uh, has some similarity with nature, for example, here these uh, stripes, the so-called maynard gira equations, a special case of reaction diffusion uh, equation. And uh, this is uh, the uh, natural pattern here of stripes on the skin of a zebra or here on the shells of uh, snails or on the wings of butterflies or here in chemistry. Uh, oscillating uh, spiral waves in the Belouze of Chabotinsky reaction, which was described by Ilya uh, Prigozhin, or even here this kind of structures in uh, the brain, structures with some similarity to this uh, uh, amazing uh, structure which was uh, generated by a population of insects, by uh, termites. And um, all these uh, activities are uh, made possible by uh, local active cells, local active uh, elements. And uh, local active uh, and uh, cells are the only reason for uh, pattern uh, formation. And uh, uh, there is a nice uh, new insight, the so-called edge of chaos. Edge of chaos means uh, a cell is not only local active uh, and it is uh, not only unstable, instability is of course a reason for pattern formation, but uh, it is stable. And stable means, that was a case of uh, Turing, means uh, metaphorically speaking the systems are dead. But then these uh, uh, elements are brought uh, together, uh, dissipative interactions, they get a dissipative push and they are shifted across the uh, edge of uh, stability into a zone of instability in order to generate uh, structures and therefore they are called at the edge of chaos. And by the way, I personally believe that even the origin of life on our Earth can uh, be modeled by the local activity principle. For example, uh, consider um, a completely hostile environment in the deep dark sea at uh, the edge of a hot volcano, the at first isolated chemical substances, they are brought together by dissipative interaction in order to generate new life. And this is uh, the brain, uh, the brain with local active uh, principles, uh, the uh, uh, firing neurons generating uh, patterns in a different way and the different patterns are correlated with different cognitive and uh, mental uh, states. And 
uh, in electrical engineering, these different cell assemblies can be modeled by technical circuits. For example, here an uh, exon. An exon is modeled by a line of identical cells, the so-called Hodgkin-Huxley cells, and connected by dissipative diffusion uh, couplings, which uh, can technically be realized by passive uh, resistors. And uh, this is a technical model of such a cell with uh, external exon membrane current as input connected with a membrane capacitor uh, voltage. And these are the local active centers here, transistor-like technical units. And by the way, transistor is a wonderful example of the local activity principle because a transistor amplifies small inputs, for example, from a battery in order order to generate a strong uh, output. And these technical uh, considerations, um, I think, have a deep impact to the possibility of artificial minds. Um, the um, local action potentials of neurons are computable by uh, reaction diffusion equations of the brain, the so-called Hodgkin-Huxley uh, equations. And the local action potentials are the origin for emerging uh, patterns. And the patterns I mentioned it before can be computed at least uh, uh, approximately by computer simulations. And these uh, patterns are correlated with the uh, different cognitive uh, states. So at least in principle, it is imaginable that uh, we can construct the technical and uh, mathematical machinery in order to generate uh, artificial minds. Now, uh, these uh, um, robots and um, uh, neuromorphic computers with these kinds of artificial minds are nowadays not isolated, but they are connected in the huge information and communication systems. This is the next step, the emergence of a global uh, super brain consisting of our planet Earth, uh, connected with the information and communication systems as uh, nervous systems and in the Internet of Things nowadays nearly everything can be connected with everything by sensors and apps generating a huge amount of data, so-called big data, and big data is the uh, data traffic in the global super brain. Generating again patterns and uh, patterns uh, which can be detected and uh, analyzed by uh, machine learning algorithms. And these patterns are again connected, correlated with meanings. And the meaning here are profiles of markets, profile of products or of uh, persons, which at least in principle can be anticipated and uh, predicted by uh, algorithms. And uh, these patterns, uh, again, are characterized by local activity principles. The uh, centers here uh, in the social media, new ideas, fashions, which, which spread all over the world, or in economy, the centers of innovation and uh, entrepreneurship, with some similarities, these patterns, by the way, to patterns spreading in the medical epidemiology. And uh, so there is an evolution of data which can be reduced to very simple building blocks. These are the zeros and ones, the uh, digits and uh, the bits, not only in uh, the big data world of our civilization, but also in the Big Bang world of uh, the universe. In the last case, these are the quantum states of elementary particles. So in the end, I think we live in uh, emerging uh, bubbles of complexity, which at least in principle can be reduced to homogeneity, to simplest simplicity and uh, to symmetry. And uh, so it is a challenge, I think, to detect and uh, to analyze the digital codes of these evolutions in order to understand the origin and the future of our existence. Thank you.